Good morning, and welcome to this time of reflection for the readings for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost, the 9th of August, 2020. And just a word of thanks for all those who wished me a great holiday. It was a great relaxing time, and I've recharged my batteries to set us on course for whatever lies ahead in September. So, with that, let's take a moment just to gather our thoughts in prayer. I wait for the Lord. In his word is my hope. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our collect or prayer for this, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of our church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of your Spirit in love, joy, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A prayer for those coping with the virus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick. And lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm number 105, verses 1 to 6 and 16 to 22 and 45b. That's Psalm number 105, verses 1 to 6, 16 to 22 and 45b. We'll give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen one. When he summoned famine against the land and broke every staff of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters. His neck was put in a collar of iron until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions, to instruct his officials at his pleasure, and to teach his elders wisdom. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Gospel for this morning is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately, he made the disciples get into a boat and go on ahead to the other side. Well, he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by the time the boat had, by, but by that time, the boat had been battered by waves and was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter asked him, Lord, if it, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water, 
and came toward Jesus. But when he had noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of Christ. To really get a hold of this gospel passage, we first have to back up a bit and understand the context that it, we find it in. Just prior to this, crowds have gathered around Jesus. They listen, listen to him preach and talk about a new world, a new kingdom. He's even healed some people, and this has gone on all day. To the point now where the disciples are a little concerned, because it's getting near supper time. And they're worried that this, this crowd is going to come to them looking for food for supper. So they come to Jesus and they say, Jesus, you've got to dismiss the crowd. You've got to send them home. It's supper time. We have no food to feed them. And so we saw Jesus take the five loaves and the two fishes and bless them and feed all those people. But immediately upon feeding all those people, he turns to his disciples and said, okay, now go in the boat and cross the lake. You can leave now. And then he dismisses the crowd. And to me, what's important about that word dismisses is he doesn't say to them, go, take off, leave, get out of here. No, he, he probably said something like what we use in our Eucharist. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Something along those lines, something to encourage the crowd. And they too get up and leave. And so then we find Jesus, he goes off by himself to a mountaintop to pray. Now many of us can relate to that. Jesus now is exhausted. He spent all day with the crowd. He's healed people. He's talked to people. He's had tremendous compassion for people. And he just wants time alone to recharge. It's, it's a, it's so you find him, no wonder he's on a hilltop. He wants that peace and quiet for a little while to talk to God. It's no different than you and I, you know, every Christmas. Every Christmas, two weeks before, what happens? We get in our vehicles and we go down to the mall. And you spend 40, 45 minutes circling the parking lot trying to find a place. We're like those vultures, you know, looking for a place. And then finally you get a place and you get in, you park your vehicle and you go into the mall and there's people everywhere. Everywhere you turn, there's somebody. And so you finally reach out and grab something and you take it and you stand in another line to pay for it. And so you finally get it paid for and then you get back to your vehicle and you start it up and you get in another line to leave the parking lot. And then by the time you get home, you're exhausted, totally exhausted. And all you want to do is sit in peace and quiet. You no longer want anybody around you. And this is the same thing. Even the Son of God got tired. He wanted time by himself. And so he gets that time, he recharges himself, and he sets off to the other side of the lake. And this is what most people focus in on at this point. Most preachers would focus in on the conversation that he has with Peter. But I want to ask you this question. Why did Jesus go anywhere near the boat? Think about it. He has all the capability to walk all the way across the lake, he doesn't, have to, he doesn't have to speak to the disciples at all. He can certainly get to the other side well before them. It's not like he needs to go up to the side of the boat and say, hey, is there room for one more? Can I get in? No. So why does he go near the boat? Well, I think the answer is in what Matthew says, that there was a storm. There was wind battering against the boat, and the boat wasn't going anywhere. It had stalled out. In fact, it was being pushed back. It wasn't going to get to the other side. And so Jesus reaches out, helps with Peter, and then get what happens? He gets in the boat, and what's the first thing that happens? The wind dies down and all is calm. And so the boat now can proceed. So you may say, okay, John, that's all fine and Danny, but how does that relate to me? I mean, what does that, how does that even 
how do I even make sense of that? Well, I think first of all, that we should take note of the fact that even the Son of God needed time for himself. Imagine that, the Son of God needed time for himself. So you and I should not feel at all guilty when we take time for ourselves. Because look what happened as soon as he had taken time for himself. He was filled with energy again, so much so that he got up and walked across the lake. And he noticed that the disciples were having a problem. And what does he do? He turns to them and helps them. And you and I in our own bubbles, in our own boats, at times run into that same wind, don't we? That same wind that seems to be pushing us back. But we should take strength that just as Jesus turned and went and helped the disciples in that boat, he turns to you and I and helps us when we are in when we are when we're in trouble with the wind, as it were. When the world around us seems to be pushing us back. He's there. He's been there all along. And he's the one that reaches out and says, Listen, I'm here to help you. And all we have to do is say, Thank you. So that's what I'd like you to, to think about this week. First of all, think about taking time for yourselves, especially as we're going into this big September. Take time to, to really recharge your batteries. And secondly, when you feel that storm or that wind against your boat, take courage knowing that Jesus is there, ready to help us and calm the wind. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we take our worship, praise, and prayer from this place and into our daily lives, may our lives be sustained through the love of our Heavenly Father. May we feel the presence of our Savior walking beside us and know the power of the Spirit in both our actions and our words. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for sharing this time of worship with me this morning and have a great week ahead. Amen.